Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time once again for Closing the Wealth Gap. The one show, maybe the only show that shows you how to close the wealth gap in your own life with the man who's done it for many, our wealth coach himself, Tyrone French. Hey, Tyrone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Closing the Wealth Gap. I'm your host, Tyrone French, and I want to start out with a disclosure. A disclosure. Uh, this information that we're putting out is for informational purposes only. Uh, you won't hear any investment advice going out on closing the wealth gap is for educational purposes. But what we'd like for you to do is, you know, team up with a professional and somebody with the correct credentials or the right credentials in your area that, that can help you further your process as far as closing the wealth gap. Uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to our, uh, our corporate sponsor, Long Beach BMW, BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And I like the fact that Long Beach BMW, they're a, they're a proud supporter of veteran-owned businesses. Uh, the general manager over there, his name is Robert Lee. Uh, they they take care of me. They treat me like royalty. So Google uh, Long Beach BMW. Uh, reach out to the general manager over there, Robert Lee. He'd love to shake your hand and, and give you a cup of coffee, a bottle of water. And like I said, every time I go over there, they treat me like a king. So Long Beach BMW, thank you very much. Paul? Yes. Um, I mean, we don't have a whole lot of time for this episode, but there's so many things happening. Uh, the world is going crazy. There are now meta trends. I didn't even heard this word before. Now Facebook is telling everything. It's not just regular change. It's greater change. It's meta. It's an old Greek term that means, you know, giant change going on is that what we're going through well everything is changing the the world is in a state of flux and you have to well you don't know you don't have to it's a choice but you would be uh it would be it would be wise if you partnered up with someone that understands where we are and have the experience to navigate these these landmines and these potholes because it's not going to get it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. Can I give and you a weird analogy? Uh, this we're taping this on uh, the nineteenth of November, right after Veterans Day on the eleventh. So we did a number of Veterans Day shows. You can imagine here in the station. Yes. And one of them really just I can't get out of my head. We had a guy can't come on. This was a show dealing with um, pancreatic cancer, a, a very deadly form of cancer. Nine out of ten people yes. die. And it's a show where people come on and tell real stories. So they found a veteran who came on and told his story. And he was an Army Ranger. You guys, mm-hmm. you were in the Army and the Navy. This guy, right. You know these guys. They, they're, they're like the SEALs, all these special op guys. They're trained to ex- work on their own, to rely on themselves and their immediate team, their buddies. Nobody else. You never right. ask for help. You are self-reliant because you're behind enemy lines. you got to be resourceful and self-reliant. And he said the toughest thing he had to go through is when he came back and got this deadly disease, he wanted to gut it out himself. He wanted to talk about it to his wife, cost him his marriage. He didn't want to talk about it even to the VA or to his buddies. They didn't really want to hear about it. Sounds like whining, complaining. And he said, I had to realize it's okay to ask for help. Why are we, particularly men, we don't ask for directions. We don't ask for help. And particularly if you've got a military background, just figure it out yourself. Yeah, you know what? I'm sitting here and um, I'm quiet because you, you're 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 pulling off a, a scab on an old wound. Yeah. I don't want to get too graphic and everything, but it's 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 humbling and it's 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 one of those things where you have so much responsibility when you're in the military, mm-hmm. and you're so committed and you're so dedicated to fulfilling your job. You're because you understand you're a part of a whole. Right. And you don't want to let anybody down. You don't want to let you don't want to let your buddies down. You know, you don't want to let the person on the left and the person on the right. You want to make sure that you fulfill your end of the bargain. Mm-hmm. And you get really good at it. And now all of a sudden you get out and you don't really you don't really feel institutionalized, but that's really a word that, you know needs to be addressed when we're talking about these veterans 
because you're so used to everything being taken care of. Yeah. You're so used to everything falling into place. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that everything, you know, happened perfectly every single time, but you had a plan and you would execute that plan. And if things didn't go, if they didn't go the way they were supposed to go, you adapt, you improvise, right? But you, but you never thought about not completing the mission. That wasn't even an option. It was, what do I do as far as problem solving and, and figuring out the next stage as far as making this happen. Now you're a civilian and you have all of these agencies and all of these organizations and all of these different platforms that you have to go through and they're time consuming. And it, it's not the same, it's not the same to me, it's not the same attention to detail mm-hmm. that you have when you're in the military. Or it's clear cut. As it's the not mission clear, was. clear cut. And, and you get to the point where you get frustrated. Right. And you want to just, you know, well, forget about this. You know, I just, you know, like I said, like I said I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. But, but when it, you're sick, when you're sick, you can't. you got to rely on that system. And it's frustrating. So aren't we all financially sick a little bit here? Aren't we all got a cold or a flu when it comes to our finances and we're afraid to ask for help or directions? But, but that's the issue. Not I me. Mean, not all of us. I mean, five percent of us are doing well. Yeah, right. Well. As a matter of right. fact, even doing better than, than before. Better I than believe before the uh, Amazon got richer, as did Elon Musk. Uh, Jeff Bezos didn't suffer during the the downturn. None of the wealthy, Paul. None of the top five percent. If you have the top one percent, then you have four percent within that group, which is which represents the five percent. Right. Nobody in that in that group is is suffering. No, everything is growing. It's the 95 percent of the population that is struggling. So I'll give you another example. Um, We were doing a show earlier today about entrepreneurs, solopreneurs and how hard it is. You got nobody to turn to. You can't admit. I don't know. Uh, You got to just figure it out. Keep going through like the kind of like the military lone wolf. And yet the people who are super successful who have lots of business. We had a guy on who had half a dozen businesses. And I said, how do you run four or five businesses all at once? People, teamwork. Same thing the military teaches yes. you. Teamwork. Yes. Can't yes. do it all yourself. Got to get a good team. Got to work together. Why are we reluctant to have a team in our lives? It's a mindset, Paul. Team Paul. Where is Team Paul? It, it, it's a mindset. And it's something, again, when you look at uh, CEOs of Fortune 50 companies, a lot of times they had, you know, they had really one common denominator. A lot of these guys were uh, military trained. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so you have that that level of commitment. You have that diff uh, that that discipline, but you also have that reality as far as being able to assess the situation uh, truthfully. Whereas it, it's not a pipe dream. You know, a lot of people right. they're delusional based on what they think they can and can't do. Whereas with that, and just my experience with that military background, you kind of see things as they are. And how about holding you accountable? In the military, there's no BS. Uh, The plane flies, it doesn't fly. Uh, And and that's the responsibility aspect of it. As a matter of fact, to give you an example, I was was a final checker on the USS Midway. And I was a young guy, uh, must have been about maybe 23 years old. And I was an avionics technician. Mm -hmm. And my, you know, uh, on the flight deck, you have different categories of individuals that's, that are up there. You have mechanics up there. You have right. airframe people up different there. Different color shirts so they can cheat. Different color other. shirts based on what they represent as far as that aircraft. Right. And so uh, th- there's a code. Before the, before the pilot flies off the deck, uh, everybody has a code. And when they flash that code, that means that they have a, they have, they're having a particular problem with that particular system. Right. Well, uh, they flash my code. Uh, I run on the cat, run up, run up, run up to the catapult, and it's sitting there. I mean, it's it's ready to go. And the it was during a weapons exercise, and you had this system called identification friend or foe. And what would, what that means is that you want to know who your buddies are up there. Who am I shooting know, at? <laughs> you want to know who the bogeys or the bad guys are. Yeah, right. So the system was down, and so I I climb into the plane, uh, you know. Talk to the navigator. He's telling me, yes, the, it's not squawking properly. So I pull off the panel. I do a quick system check. Now, I'm going to make this really short, but I did a quick system check. Everything was functioning properly, but it was still, they had this warning indicator in the cockpit that let them know it was a malfunction. 
Paul, I was, I knew that system like the back of my hand. So I automatically knew that the only reason that they had that warning light is that it was a short in the system. Mm-hmm. The the rack was the, it was a it was a bad connection, and it shorted uh, to the system, which gave them that warning light. So instead of instead of me scrubbing the mission because I knew how important we were a reconnaissance or a reconnaissance squadron, mm-hmm. um, we spied. You know, we were electric uh, electronic. Uh, 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 we surveillance, we, right? Our motto, our motto was in God, we trust everybody else. We monitor. <laughs> <laughs> that was your macho or your motto. That was, our, a... <laughs> that was our motto. In God, we trust uh, everybody else. We monitor. Right. And so it, it was that it was mission crucial that that plane was up there. So I basically went to the cockpit and it was an overhead lamp. So what I did was un- I just unscrewed the lamp cover I took the bulb out. I put the lamp cover back on there and told the pilot, go. And the plane went off the deck. So they came back, and lo and behold, the the, the rack, uh, there was a short circuit in the rack. We replaced the rack. We put the component back in there. It worked fine. My point was I'm 22, 23 years old making those decisions. Yeah, life or death, immediate I forget, and the thing, the thing is, you don't think about it because it's just you're, it's what you're trained to do. And they and, relied on you, and you relied on them. And because this system was in place, and this training, and this teamwork, the plane flew. It didn't take a false signal to stop it. But now you're alone. You're an entrepreneur. You run your own life. You run your own family. We're the lone wolf. Nobody can tell me what to do. I am. I am a king of my own castle here. That's great. That's good. That treats us American self-reliance and all those good things we want to do. But there are times you need help. There are times you need somebody to say, is this light flashing? Is this economic light that's flashing? What does that mean? Well, there's, I mean, kind of look at uh, professional athletes. Yeah. You don't get to that level without having a coach. No. You don't get to that level without having trainers. You don't get to that level uh, without having a support system. Right. And so we don't equate that with our finances based on if you have a problem, um, you know, we tend to make that problem the norm and it, hmm. it becomes a habit and then you get used to it instead of saying, wait a minute, this this doesn't feel right. This is not how this should be. Um, who do I know? Uh, who can I reach out to? Uh, what avenues are out there that can help me solve this dilemma that I'm in? And that's why I wanted to establish this this show, Closing the Wealth Gap, for the 95% of the people that are out there that don't have the uh, high-end, you know, uh, the the planners or the network that can literally, they can walk in, put their information on the desk, and somebody can say, well, okay, well, based on what, what, what you're telling me right here, this is what I see that we can do to solve this problem. They don't have that. So and yet I've, in the rest of my life, you know, I was a guy of a certain age. I had to change my own oil. I had, I knew that car. That was my baby and I could take it apart. I don't, I gave that up a long time ago. That car is so sophisticated. So many computer sensors. I don't know what's telling me. I have absolutely. to, I've had to learn to rely on others and find a good team, a good mechanic. Absolutely. You know, my daughter the other day, uh, I was uh, looking at her car and her tire, you know, uh, was kind of low on the, um, uh, the the uh, the front tire, the right. uh, left side. I get out of the car and I saw it was kind of low, and I didn't tell my daughter, uh, "Hey, you know, I'm going to take your car to the service station and put some air in it." I told her, "Take your car to Jiffy Lube and let them put some air in your tire." Uh, my wife is still kind of old school. She she would really love for me to get out there and and change the brakes. Oh yeah, and, we all did. That was a sign and, of manliness. I'd do this for <laughs> exactly. you exactly. But just based on my training, I would rather have a team of individuals that know exactly what they're doing. Meaning that when she takes, we're 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 customers at at this Jiffy Lube. They know us. They they have a da- they have a record of us in her in, in the database. So they they've serviced her car for years. So when she pulls up the Jiffy Lube, they're not going to just check the tire pressure. They're going to do. Uh, they're going to do a check of the car to make sure the water is okay. Make sure that the belts are okay. Yes. Same thing with BMW. You're, you're sponsored. That's how you got to know them. You're going in there, treating you well. They're taking care of the car, not just selling your car and saying, come back and see us in five years, that you create a relationship with them, you, that you trust them. Hey, uh, Joe, the engine's knocking. Hey, it's making a funny noise here or something like that. You don't just 
go in and buy the car and then like a washing machine and never see him for five years. Uh, that's the, thing the, I like, the thing I like about Long Beach BMW is the, the, the relationship that I have with them. But when I go in, they automatically ask me, Mr. French, do you, you want to loan a car? And I'll say yes. That's and rare. what type of what type that we have a relationship to whereas what type of vehicle do you want? Because they're always trying to upsell me. Oh, so if, if they want me in the latest <laughs> BMW, I'll get that loan a car and for a day I feel like a king. Yeah. Right. And they know it. It's like Mr. French, how did that card ride? <laughs> how did how did it how did it ride? Did you like that experience? It's almost like it's it's upselling, but at the same time. Uh, when I'm out and about and I'm doing business and I'm in my BMW, I'm actually representing that company as well. You know, this is the type of and person. And you're a brand drives. ambassador, as you are for now for the show. And other things you're telling me, you've always been telling me about how great this dealer was and how they took care of you. And you had some serious problems with one of your cars and they stepped up. They took care of it for you. Uh, that's the kind of relationships we're looking for with our cars. We're looking for that with uh, other things in our lives. Why are we still handling our finances but my ourself. point my point is a lot of people dread taking their car to the dealership i dread going service. to the doctor i resisted i, I they, don't know yeah they dread it right and so because they don't like that experience so when it gets when it goes back to finances they dread trying to get their finances together because they they just don't like everybody that feels experience. that way raise your hand i'm raising mine <laughs> So what I'm telling people in, in my audience, and, and you know, the reason we do this show is because it doesn't have to be that way. Right. You can you can have a relationship with a coach or somebody that 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 you trust that can give you the information. And the word that I like to use, Paul, is fiduciary. That's a fancy fiduciary. term. That's that's a fancy word. What does that mean? All it means is that you have it's a trust. You have somebody that's going to look out for your best interest versus looking out for their own best interest. And I'm not going to I'm not going to mention any names as far as financial uh, financial companies out there. But there are certain well-known financial firms out there that will not sign a fiduciary agreement. They won't even they won't even consider it because it's also a responsibility. It's also a response. It's a major responsibility. Yeah. You know, the Marines, it isn't by accident. Their motto is Semper Fidelis, fiduciary, fidelity, always be faithful. It all comes from the always same Latin faithful. root here. Yeah. They're, so it's these little terms, little cliches, you know, certain things that we throw out there. But for some people, they actually have meaning. Yeah. They, they, they add character. They, they, they make it honorable. And so, you know, just even with this show today, we're talking about the, uh, the, these meta trends. And before we before we get off, I just want to let people know that, yeah, we're in a state of flux right now. But there's two things, there are two trends that people really need to focus on. If you, especially if you're if you're an entrepreneur, yes. Um, the one thing, if you're if you're a, 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 a corporate, if you own a corporation, um, there are going to be a lot of government contracts that are going to be issued to a lot of individuals. Hmm. Because the government needs a lot of stuff right now. It's not. It's not. People look at these uh, these budget packages that are being uh, solidified. That trillions are being passed. Trillions. But what they don't look at is the different categories based, based on where they're going to be spending this money. And so those are huge contracts. That let's say that you got you have a uh, the average entrepreneur uh, that's probably a veteran. And let's say this is a veteran and they're a disabled veteran. Mm -hmm. Did you Did you know that they have no bid contracts for veterans and disabled I, veterans. I, I hear it, but I don't really know about it. That they give such preference that you don't even have to go up against anybody. If you just have to. You have to have the right certification. You have to show up. Let them know that you're available to handle this. Uh, to handle this niche, you get the contract. Now, here's the thing: that contract could be anywhere between fifteen thousand dollars if you're dealing with the command of a procurement officer, or it could be in the millions. And so if you got a, uh, and, and they set it up for small businesses. Yeah. So if you're a small business owner and you get a million dollar government contract, that Big puts deal. you in a totally different category. But can I tell you one thing? And I know very little about this, but I hear this over and over again. The system, you got to know somebody, you need a guide, you need a Sherpa to take you up that mountain. It ain't easy to sift through the mountain of paperwork and requirements to find all these things and stuff. You need a coach, you need somebody to guide you. 
because otherwise you can get lost in the wilderness real quickly. There. So again, based on that minute trend in the future, these companies are going to need procurement officers. Yeah. And I, I, so my little company needs a procurement officer. Absolutely. So that that understands how to go after these government contracts. Right. And I'm just I'm not just talking about veterans. I'm talking about as far as if you you know the government needs all kind of things, Paul. You think they need a podcast? Maybe we need a podcast. <laughs> wow, you know I didn't see that under category, but uh, maybe <laughs> maybe wouldn't that be but also the, but the, the the second thing that people need to consider. Um, especially if you are a nonprofit, um, nonprofits need to really in the future. And then when I talk about the future, I mean the immediate future. Yeah. You need to make sure that you have a very good grant writer. Oh, that's critical. And I don't understand that whole process. Somebody who can fill out the form and tell the story in a way that fits the format they're looking for and convinces them to hand you free money. What, what this nonprofit is solving this problem for society. Right. And here's the thing. The reason that I say that, and I want people to, to really understand this because the, the, the demographics are starting to change and more billionaires are becoming more philanthropic. Yeah. So what they're saying is that we're not going to leave our money to our family. What we're going to start doing is leaving our money. And we want to like, like the, um, like the, um, uh, Andrew Carnegie's yes. and the Rockefellers. Right. What we want to start doing is leaving our money to society to help. And what they're going to do. Legacy, baby. I legacy, don't that's, live that's on. what they're focused on right now. Their legacy. And Paul, again, it's, I'm just not pulling this out of a hat. <laughs> this, this is based on associations with the 5% that, that's, that's telling everybody. It's almost like a badge of honor. I've accumulated these funds. Uh, I'm not going to live forever. Uh, so now I'm focused at this stage of my life. I'm focused on my legacy. So what nonprofits but can Tyrone, I give my money to? Tyrone, Tyrone, Tyrone. Here you go again. We're talking to the average guy, ordinary Joe. And you're telling me about government contracts and uh, uh, philanthropic grants. That sounds like something only for big and and connected. Not at all. And wealthy. Paul, what, this is the growth with closing the wealth gap is that what happens is you get to the point where you start managing your finances. Then you get to the point where you start understanding the importance and the significance of the tax code. And so you start using the tax code to your advantage. And the best way to do that is to have your own business. Your and so once you, you establish, that. Yeah. once you establish your own business, meaning that let's say you're still working your nine to five, but you're working, you're starting a business on the side. So after five o'clock from five to 10, you're running your small business. And eventually you get to the point where you want to understand your business model or the structure of that business. So whether or not you're running, you're a sole proprietor, uh, you're an S corp or a C corp. All that means is that once you, isolate what how well how you want to start doing your business there's different avenues to whereas you you're ob, you're you're entitled to well, i'm not gonna say entitled but there's certain things that you can take advantage of that Access. you couldn't take advantage of as as a sole proprietor versus being an s corp and a c corp and one of those things again is based on procurement and government contracts as a small business owner again and we're talking about growth because it, when you when you get on this journey as far as closing the wealth gap, you're just not stagnant. You're growing along the way. This mm. is a process, and it's a journey. It's never ending. So you may get to the point where you grew your business to a sole proprietorship, and you took your hobby, and you're making maybe an extra $1,000 uh, a month. Whereas now you develop that business to whereas based on your legacy, your your company has gone to another level. And so now you're doing 100000 or millions of dollars in revenue per year. And we haven't even gotten to banking or, or credit. No, no. But the nonprofit is something that in the in the near future, uh, you're going to need a really good grant writer because these, these billionaires, these corporations are going to be throwing money to solve Literally these problems. Literally throwing money. The government just passed trillions. You think they're going to go through and count every one of them? They got a who wants it? Who there's bush, bags of it, bushels of it. Like when they went to Iraq and they're you know throwing money around trying anything to stop, buy allies and stop the bleeding and get 
there are people that show up literally from the government in some of these things, uh, sometimes crazy kinds of amount. And same thing with rich people and money. Not that they're foolish, but there's such an urgency. You talk about right now to fix things. COVID. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's a passion. Yeah. Wealthy people will give money to things that they're passionate about. Bingo. And so a lot of people are thinking about, well, how do I, how do I create, how do I generate the capital and create the funding for my business? Just find some, just be doing something that wealthy people are passionate about. And be, and, and explain it clearly. Tell your story. Don't keep it a secret. They can't find you if they don't know about you. And that's why I'm saying that don't do it yourself because you will mess it up. Team up with somebody with a coach with a good grant writer, if you're a nonprofit, if you are a, uh, a small business owner, whether C Corp, S Corp, or a uh, sole proprietorship, make sure that you have a procurement office or officer because, again, the government, there are going to be a lot of government contracts out there that you could take advantage of. And if you don't know anything about these, uh, you know, as far as the grant writers and the procurement officers, uh, reach out to me, tyronefrench.coach. You can email me, Tyrone at TyroneFrench.com, or go to YouTube. Go to YouTube and yeah. just start, instead of watching, you know, you know, watching out and watching these shows all, all you know, uh, you know, and watching these series that take six hours and 12 hours, you know, go to YouTube and learn something. Learn something that you can literally apply uh, that's going to change your financial destiny. That's what I learned today. All right. How do they reach you again one more time? Again, go to tyronefrench.coach, uh, but also my app. I have a mobile app that won't take up any space on your phone. You can text Tyrone to 36260. Again, pull out your phone and text Tyrone or Tyrone French to 36260. Download that app and start using it today. That's simple. Starts with That's one simple. thing. All right. Well, it's simple to tune in and hear more. I hope people will keep coming back for more because you just keep banging it into our heads that there is such a thing as every day, there every day or wealth, ordinary wealth for everyday ordinary people. Ordinary wealth for everyday people. Ordinary wealth, or it isn't extra. It's an ordinary process. It's ordinary. There's a big, there was a book. Um, um, what was it? The millionaire. You got the millionaire, millionaire next, next door. door. Yeah. And all he was talking about is that they're doing millionaires are doing things that on the on the surface. You don't even see, but because of that compound effect, uh, they end up with millions of dollars, and it's just an ordinary process. It's an ordinary process, and you can start today. All right, look forward to hearing more here. Tyrone French, Closing the Wealth Gap, right here. That's our show for this week, Closing the Wealth Gap, the one show, the only show that shows you how to take control of your financial future. Right here in North County's only community radio station, OCTalkRadio.net.